So I got a lot of feedback on the microphone. And by a lot of feedback, I'm okay, I shouldn't exaggerate. I got some feedback on the microphone situation. Mm-hmm. How much in a sum? Three different people. <laughs> two of whom I believe like work with audio <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> who are the people who probably have more of an opinion and also can notice something? And I think I'm gonna keep it. So here we are. New microphone, new microphone, Joey. Excellent. It's the new normal. Way to invest in the podcast, Joey. I'm here to give people a good time and to make sure that I sound silky smooth while you do it. Although... I, the more audio tests I was doing and like listening to myself like over over A B A B, the more I and the, I even listened back to the podcast, and I was like, oh man, Joey, I got a lot of notes for you. I, I, I was getting really like ummy and ah last episode, and I and I couldn't handle it. I, I did not edit myself as much as I normally do, uh, and I sound like that. Uh. <laughs> And it hurt. Well, so, uh, I'll be sure to know. call you out on it. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you just make me a better broadcaster, please? Just, just make, I, I need you to make me a better person. I do coaching for that. Not the, not the person part, the, the broadcasting part. I do do coaching for that. I've done it for a couple of casters. Want to be a better commentator? I do that. I wish that was actually a job that I could do that I could like make money from. I feel like I, I I'm pretty good at that, honestly. Maybe I'm not the best commentator in the world, but I think I I know a lot about talking uh, or uh, casting specifically and how to improve. I bet if you, you know? were to like collect the top 100 English 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 broadcasters, you could probably be somewhere on that list, right? Like you you got to yeah, be probably. in like the one yeah. percent of the one percent. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I could transition over to uh, if like. I was thinking about this. So I went to a Pokemon Go event in Los Angeles. There was a big event. Did you hear about this, Joey? I Brooklyn did. was there, actually. I, did you see her? <laughs> uh, I did not. I, I texted each other, but apparently we were across the way. And then, like, uh, so so the event, let me just describe what, what the event was. The event was in London and Los Angeles. It was about the Ultra Beasts. Um, if you're a Pokemon fan, maybe you know what those are. I don't really, I just play Pokemon Go, but I don't really know anything about Pokemon anymore because too many games. I know the, the new game shit. Sorry, go ahead. Well, actually, I've heard the new game is very good. It just performs like shit. But like, apparently it's really fun. That's but, also uh, what I've heard. Okay, so the it was in the Ovation Mall Theater place area. Uh, it's basically like right there in like the, the Hollywood downtown where like, the all the like the touristy uh, the the walk the stars and the Madame Tussaud whatever her fucking name is and that one famous theater <laughs> anyway it's right down in that area and it's one of those malls and <laughs> I like your description so, of Los Angeles there's the fucking theater the Hollywood and like the wax people it's, just, it's bullshit like it's the area that I would never want to go to basically because it's a very clearly a tourist trap in Los Angeles which isn't really like a place for touristy traps you were literally so, on the Walk of Fame. Uh, which yeah, and, yeah. and Austin's right. If you, if you're ever gonna be touring Los Angeles, don't don't go to Hollywood and Highland. But you you were at the mall yeah. there. There's a Pokemon Go event. I know there was also one in London because I saw people. My friends were sending me like updates from the London one on Snapchat, and they were queuing for hours to get in. Did you have to do that in LA? No. Okay. God, no. No. Absolutely. I would. There was no way I care enough about that situation to do that. Uh, no. We probably queued for like. 20 minutes um, to, to get uh, a ticket. Basically, you get like a ticket that gives you like the in-game sort of deals. So your in-game Pokemon Go will change. Uh, and it's basically, it was just raids. If anybody plays Pokemon Go, it was just like special raids. But they had like a whole show going on where they had a projected uh, video going on. They had a countdown and then a wormhole appeared and then uh, the beast would spawn. And they would the, the beast would spawn. It would probably go for like eight uh, I think eight about eight minutes, and uh, the beast the the beast would show up and it would basically do some animation. They played some music with it, and it would just do that on repeat for like eight minutes. It was actually very mind numbing the fact that it just kept going on repeat. It was like a a, a fucking ten second loop 
for eight <laughs> minutes straight. It was oh, it no. was not great, uh, but it was it was kind of cool. They had a, a, a whole uh, like they had a field area where there was like I don't know some sort of props that I didn't give shit about, um, and there was a stream. There was a live stream going on there, and all I could think about while I'm standing there and like I'm I'm doing the raids and I'm catching Pokemon and shit uh, with with a group of friends that we have uh, that all do it. The, the, all I could think about was those poor fucking suckers, the the two hosts, which I'm sure made a lot of money from doing it. So I'm not sure why I say poor suckers, but I did feel bad because I, I just for like an hour and a half, two hours straight, every single time I look down, they're just like standing in front of a camera talking to each other about this event that I cannot possibly think of what you would have to say for like during this eight minute period when a beast would spawn, I couldn't think of more than like two minutes of content that I could possibly talk about. And all I could think about is like, what, how much fill time are they going through right now? What on earth could they possibly still be talking about? And I was also thinking about, I could do that job. <laughs> <laughs> Both sides. I was like, that could be me right there. I would hope that they knew what they were in for. Maybe not them specifically, but at least the, the broadcast producer. And there were just talking points or like a light script or, something something yeah i'm a little tempted to go back through and see if i can find the stream vod and just kind of see what the the broadcast was like uh and see if it was any good to be honest because i struggled to see how it could be good what was the average age of people who were there oh it was actually highly varied interesting um, the kind of the most common that i saw was um, kind of like my generation, so it'd be like late twenties. Uh, it, like twenty something was definitely pretty common. Um, lower, lower on the thirties. But there was also a lot of older people there as well. I saw like uh, some people that were definitely in like their forties and fifties. Uh, and there was also a lot of families, uh, which I thought was kind of cool. It was like basically Pokemon like, Go families. N- yeah, it was like nerd parents who very obviously like got their like kids into it or maybe their kids got into it and they got into it because of their their kids or like their kids just dragged them there but like all, honestly all the parents that i saw there seemed like pretty engaged uh we were next to a dad that was uh i thought it was pretty cute he was having a really good time with his kids every single time he's like oh he was obviously new to pokemon go uh mm-hmm. in pokemon i think and he was just like oh what, what is this what is this thing every single time a beast would spawn it was uh it was pretty funny so I... but yeah there was a lot of families actually I have a I have a younger friend who I used to work with. He's like in his early twenties, and his dad plays a lot of games. And he messaged me today, and he's like, "Hey, have you like gotten all the ravens in God of War?" Because he saw that I was playing it, and he was also playing it because uh-huh. I'm friends with my friend's dad on, <laughs> on <laughs> the PlayStation. Uh-huh. And when I saw the message, I'm like, "This is both cute." And a little bit painful, but I'm gonna lean into cute and not and not be weird mm. about this. Did he need help finding a raven or something? So my my thought, yes, my thought was, <laughs> homie, you can just Google it. But I guess it's like he wanted IT support except gaming support now. Yeah, exactly. It's like I know you 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 probably know that you can look that up. I know that you're like you're relatively <laughs> young. I'm pretty sure you can figure out. You've probably looked up a game guide before for something you're missing. I think that he just wanted to like have a moment because there was someone else playing the video game that uh, he wanted. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I'm all for I'm all for more gamer parents. We're we're like ten years out from like a lot of gamer parents, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. For sure. For sure. I'm curious what what nursing homes are going to look like for our generation. I have a list of games that I want mm-hmm. to play it, mentally when I am like retired in 70. If I make it that far. <laughs> You're already planning that far ahead. You're like, eh, maybe not right now, but in 40 years time, that game is uh, I'm taking that one on. I, okay, that's a, that's a light exaggeration, but I actually do. I mean, we talked about these four. Before. Give me an example. Dark Souls. I'm a little bit neurotic. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you're gonna wait? You're in your prime now, Joey, to play Dark Souls. You're gonna wait? 
I have what I'm trying to say is I have a list of games that I do want to revisit and probably revisit mm-hmm. multiple times. They're kind of like my my hits and my timeless ones. Like I think it's almost like someone who's like I watch the same movie every so often, except okay, way more sure. intensive because it's a hundred hour movie. So I <laughs> I have a list of games that I want to play like again and again, especially you know as as I get a wee bit older and mm. see like how they start to hold up and what games get added to that. The next one on my list of games to replay is actually uh, Firewatch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the, it's kind of always been a game that I was like, ah, yeah, I really should play that. Uh, I just never really got around to it. That would be you know, my recommendation for that. That's like a not bad date night game for you to just like get a bottle of wine and order in and like just play with Ellie on the couch. Mm. Like, can you be co-op? Is that co-op? It's not co-op, it is, right? but but it's just mostly decision making. Like you can take turns. Like why? It's not very intense, right? So you could you mm-hmm. could be like piloting the character together in in conversation. Mm. The, the mm makes makes me feel like what are you guys oh, gonna have? Like- <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's something she'd be into, but mm, it could be. Yeah, she's got to play her Genshin stuff. I true had a long weekend. It was it was four days over in the states most people probably know and if you don't know congrats for being able to you know be excluded from the american bubble had had a long thanksgiving weekend you mm. stayed in los angeles like you normally do yeah how was thanksgiving buddy yeah we normally we host a, a thanksgiving dinner uh mm-hmm. but this year we did not do that uh but then we kind of did do that only one friend came over and we did not have a thanksgiving dinner we had homemade pizza that Ellie does that's very good and played uh, board games and that's it. It was very chill. It was great. Great Thanksgiving. I wish I wish I could have come over. I can't. I'm, I'm going to try and lower my voice a little bit because the window's open and people might be able to like hear me outside or if the front door's mm-hmm. open because mm-hmm. again, I live with my parents. But Thanksgiving. Loser. <laughs> Dude, Loser. You're, you're telling me I'm going to be fucking 30 in a couple weeks. Kill me. Um... <laughs> Thanksgiving Thanksgiving was rough mm. and I wish I was playing board games and having homemade pizza what was the most racist or sexist transphobic. or just you're looking for transphobic, transphobic. And ended up being uh, really that transphobic. was the flavor of the month uh-huh. okay yeah so <laughs> uh, no so so it, it was a mixture of that and also um my mom and her brother talking about having different dads and then yelling at each other. So we finally got to have the family <laughs> conversation about that, but it went good. Bad. Oh. oh, it went bad, Austin. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that sounds. I mean, it sounds miserable, but all, but but it also sounds fun in a kind of like watching a car crash sort of way. <laughs> first, first step of the healing process, right? Maybe. Mm. Mm, I don't know. It, it, it yeah, was it was a look. You know, I made it through almost the entire day. I, I told some of my friends. I think even you. I'm like, dude, there's like, there's gonna be a problem. Like, I, I just, oh God, it's gonna it's gonna be a day. Someone's gonna yell at each other, and we almost made it through without that happening until mm. they until that until that happened. So, um, what well, was well it was there a specific spark did somebody say something that like annoyed somebody else and then it was just like well at least i you know like it was that sort of thing or? it's actually i think it's really hard to talk about broad strokey uh because mm-hmm. it is okay, like very nuanced and does require like i'm probably doing a bad job because not everybody listens to every minute of every episode but um uh you know i i i think that there was some jealousy for each other's situations uh mm. in, in in their youth and then a lot of yelling and like raised voices and not being able to like control emotions so i, I think it was that one person that said they great. loved each other then the other person didn't reciprocate oh god damn they just said somebody's real mad they just said thank you <laughs> uh, thank you yeah, so thanks. Th- so that <laughs> was right. a, that was a different problem. Just pro, pro tip: if someone says they love you, um, even if you don't mean it, maybe just like lie. I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe that's actually bad advice. Don't follow that one. Yeah, I was about to say. I don't think that's great <laughs> advice. If somebody's <laughs> confessing their love for you, and you don't feel the same way. Don't lie to them just to to save their feelings. For example. So naturally, what I proceeded to do after that was mm-hmm. lock myself away in my own mind palace. 
and by mind palace mm. i mean i played all of god of war ragnarok between thursday and sunday and basically <laughs> played zero of it on friday so i did like 15 hours a day like for three days ish i got i got a platinum trophy everybody if anybody needs to know where the ravens are I'll direct you to Google. There's a good map. I did not find mm. all of them all myself. I did look some of them up, but God of War Ragnarok in the can. Is it a good game? It really is. Is it the best Sony first party game? I think the God of War series is better than, than The Last of Us, but you know, you, you can come find me on that. Uh, was it better than the first one? This, you know, the one that they did two or three years ago, whatever. Uh, yeah, God of War, parentheses, 2018. I mm. think no. I think they're so I think that they're both really good. I think that they're both nine out of tens, but on that scale, I guess there's not enough like delineation to like say which one's better. Better, they're, 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 they're both nines, but the first one I think is better because it felt so fresh and novel and different and like a reinvigoration of a series that I had some attachment to and played and had like nostalgia for like they did a really good job of bringing something back and making it unique this is an iteration on that so it still does all, like basically all the same things that it did well just more of and a little bit different a little bit nuanced there's much more story this time uh it's a little mm. bit longer it's it's just different but i think that's that there is like an intangible magic factor to 2018 that ragnarok does not possess but they are both very good games Apologies to anybody who doesn't care about this conversation, but I'm going to keep it going because I have a question now that's burning in my head that I must know. <laughs> what? How did he go? Did he just kill? Because maybe this is light spoilers, but I haven't played the game. So and, <laughs> and I know a little bit, so I really don't feel like this is spoilers. Did he just kill all the Greek gods? Because as I understand, he went from like aries zeus and then he started killing titans did he just run out was there nothing left in the greek mythology universe that they then went into norse gods and, and how and what how are all the gods real in that universe and he, like what's next is he gonna go like start killing like hindu gods or like what's what's the plan so <laughs> no kratos did not kill all of the greek gods because not all of the games were in the this is series right so we don't see him kill everything i'm pretty sure that that he does leave somebody alive too and i wish that i could quickly google it and see well, because it's gonna I, drive me crazy I didn't actually i didn't actually think he killed everybody but, but i was no, being no, a little okay. confused there but like he, basically he kills, they he ran kills, out of content so, right he's he there was nothing left no, so there there is not a great explanation for how Kratos goes from like uh Greece to the Nordic area mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that I don't know what to name. They, they they basically say that like his his homeland, his ecosystem, his everything was destroyed and he left. So I, I don't know if that's like a metaphor for like an empire falling, like the Greek Empire fell and now this is, you know, post that or th th there isn't like a solid like this happened. So I left and now I went from the Middle East into into the Nordic area. It's not okay. very well explained. There, there, but like, there's but not like a solid from, answer. Uh, but from a non lore, it's because they ran out of content, right? There was nothing left for Kratos to kill in the Greek mythology. I right? think they, I think they were just done with the game. Like they mm, they okay. did a trilogy with some extra games because there was multiple like PSP titles too. They they did a set series of games that probably went on longer than they originally thought it was going to be based on the original creative. Like I don't think they set out to make five games from the start. It just became successful, so they kept on you know doing the thing where they have to fix their <laughs> fix their media midway through. And then they just stopped, and then the reboot is just like, well, what do we do? Because, yeah, you would either have to go back to zero and have the story in Greece or just completely, you know, evolve the character and move them on. So they just they just moved them on, and there is not a great explanation for it. I see. Okay. I don't think I Kratos killed Aphrodite, for anybody who's a big God of War person. <laughs> That's like the one god that was left maybe apollo the too. goddess of love too far too far well you know leave her alive 
everybody else needs to die. Yeah. So now I have I have two games left that I need to try and play before the end of the year in order to meet my goal of bringing my video game backlog to literally zero. Wow. Yes. And in order to accomplish that goal, I've really been slacking on television. But there's two games. <laughs> One of them is Pokemon Scarlet, and I and I might start it this week i might have opinions next week i know a lot of people are playing it i know that there's a lot of problems with like the the way that it's running but whew, i think i gotta i gotta do it i have to do it i don't have a choice yeah. my hands are tied what am it's i gonna true. do say Nothing no else you could do yeah thank you uh, i love how you talk about how you're slacking off on tv too uh joy you just need to be working harder you're, you just need to cram your schedule full. Work 12 hours and then get another eight hours of media consumption in. You're not being a, a good American. <laughs> How else do I support the things? I, I just have too many things that I like. I love working. I love games. I love TV. I like I like working out. I went to the gym. Like I, I got I to gotta find a way to just do more things at the same time. Good job. I'm, or, I'm the, yeah. on going to the gym. I'm. It's it's like going from the back of my head to the front of my head uh, when it comes to going to the gym. I've been thinking long and hard about it. It's about about that time. It's about that time. Did you? Yeah. You probably didn't do this. Did you weigh yourself before you left for Singapore and when you got back? Uh, yeah, I gained about 15 pounds. Though some of that may <sighs> be uh, medication related. I, I lost a fair amount of weight. I lost about uh, 15 to 20 pounds um, leading up to Singapore for uh, unintentional reasons. And then uh, I think I gained it back in part because of medication. So, Yeah, he, took, he cut one of his big fucking testicles off. He was just like, oh, God, I got I to gotta lose 15 pounds so I can make weight for my check bag. I, gotta, this is just, I can't buy pants anymore. So that's it. It's a, you know, these long airplane flights, it's just really it's hard. Really, you know? It's really uncomfortable. Yeah. Hey, Doc. Can you get the man spread all the time, you, you know? Take the left one off. I, I gained three. Okay. Which I was pretty satisfied with for the entire trip. Mm -hmm. And then since we've been back with the holiday and with seeing people and with, you know, not going to the gym since I've been back until like today, mm -hmm. I'm getting like five more. So I did more damage mm -hmm. in a week at home than I did like four weeks on the road, which is upsetting. Yeah. I don't know about you, but uh, hotel breakfast buffets definitely get me. And also, like, set scheduled, like, three meals a day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat all those meals. <laughs> so, you know. Can't that, say that. Uh, that always gets me, too. Same goes with our vacation. We also had kind of three set meals set up there as well. So. Yeah. We're like, yo, cook. And they did. It was yeah. good. They made nice food. What are we going to talk about Dota related Ooh. today? Because uh, rosters aren't finalized. So there isn't a bunch of rosters quite yet to talk about. There's some, but honestly, roster talk is kind of boring to me. <laughs> I'd rather <laughs> Don't just tell wait. Anybody. I'd rather just wait till it's done, right? Yeah. I'd rather just wait until it's done. I know that I have to go do something for a roster announcement. I have to go. Mm. I have to go figure out what to do. I gotta like. God, I might, I you might have to go send to the Tumba Man to the farm upstate. Yeah, he's gonna. We're gonna give him a Viking funeral. Mm. I pitched giving him okay. a Viking funeral, and that didn't, that didn't no. go over too well. Actually, I mean, it, it would fit so nicely. He's got a boat and everything. Yeah, and the beard, and it just all, all makes sense. So I, I know that I'm, I'm actually really annoyed. I'm gonna go with annoyed. Mm because <sighs> roster locks happen and everything's going to be public on December 9th which is mm -hmm. so soon why is that to be so soon why is, why is it so soon why, why is this a problem <laughs> you've known your roster for a while you, you're getting a bigger heads up than I think most teams do y yes so why are you annoyed just because there's a lot of other things that have to happen <laughs> and unfortunately mm -hmm. like you know the, the the dota roster announcement is not like number one 
It just sounds like to me you're overworked. Mm, maybe. Mm. Or not. I'm just going to take another vacation. I'm contemplating actually going up to the eSports Awards in Vegas on a Wednesday in two weeks. Okay. Uh, in two know. weeks? Because I want to... It's in the middle of December? It's on a Wednesday. It's on a huh. Wednesday. The voting's not done yet. <laughs> I see. Why do you want to go to that? I mean, outside of the fact that it's relatively close and it's... Because I can go to Vegas for two days and then just like spend one of them networking and then one of them playing uh, craps. Mm. <laughs> Not working. <laughs> I would consider going if I want nothing to do with the awards. Thing. <laughs> I don't care about the awards themselves at all. You're just like, yeah, I'll drive. I'll drive up with you, but like, I'm not gonna. Go, I'm not gonna yeah. go to the show. <laughs> yeah, I have no desire to network. <sighs> I don't know. Gross. So the one thing that I do know about Dota, the one thing that I do know about Dota, and I don't uh -huh. know the validity of it, not that that stopped us from talking about anything before, but I don't mm -hmm. know the full validity of it, is apparently there might not have been some South American DPC payments. Ah, uh, yes, that. Yeah, I don't know about the validity of that either. Well, I mean, let's be honest they didn't pay out that's like 95 because i've heard about this like two or three times now at this point before the she esports thing there was also an individual player who posted something like this before and that was like a couple of weeks ago um yeah we might be experiencing a gsc sa uh situation i almost made that tweet this morning almost and i was like nah the because I honestly don't think this is going to turn into a GESC. That's what people immediately are like. Oh, they're just not going to pay. I think they're probably just late on payment and they're fucking up and they're going to pay. I'm sure, but uh, they're they're just being irresponsible with it. They're also probably never running a tournament again. <laughs> yeah, when you uh, you don't people like they. I think it said there was 90 days. Uh, and I think they're on day like 134 or something like that. So they're well past mm -hmm. their expected. But you know what the fucked up thing? I almost read this too. You know what the fucked up thing was? And th this tells you that like I've been in esports for a while. Is that I saw the number like 100. Let's say just say it was 134 days. 134 days uh, s since the, the league ended or something. I was just like. 134 days that's not that long to wait for payment <laughs> no no no. yeah <laughs> that was the um, first thing i thought when i saw that i was like 134 days that's chump change what are you talking about that's a whole quarter <laughs> <laughs> that's that's four months my dude yeah i know that uh, like uh, that's why i didn't tweet this because i was like i didn't want to like appear to be normalizing this or i also didn't want to be like back in my day sort of thing but it was just like that's kind of fucked up because that's that's used to be what like esports like mo was is that you just wouldn't get paid for something for like six months you know like and it was just like yep that's just the way things are nothing you could do about it 90 days was like wow that's like I got paid within a couple months of the work that I did. That's wow. That was really fast. Like that's what it used to be. So that's why my head immediately jumped to that. Cause I was just like, that's what has been ingrained in me at this point. You know, who did get paid and talked about it very publicly is, oh, is, yeah. is, is, is the King, Snaking. Mr. Mr. Snake King. <laughs> yeah. He had one of those moments that like, it's a Twitch clip moment. I, I well, I say it's a Twitch clip moment. It's not like I went back and watched the VOD or anything like that. But it's obviously a moment where something is kind of being taken out of context. He's not really he's not really complaining about uh, how little money he made or whatever. Uh, you know, it's, it's, snaking wouldn't be that tone deaf. Uh, he dialed it. He, he reeled it back in on Twitter later when he saw the, the complaints about it. Uh, <laughs> But, I yeah, only made almost a million dollars. <laughs> Some would yeah, be sad I only for made a million. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah. You, why don't more esports people who are gonna be like winning uh, just try and do more 
tax fraud. That's the wrong way to put it. Why don't more people try <laughs> and get themselves into like an advantageous tax situation? Because I feel like if I am an esportser, I'm probably stuck in America. Like I'm not just going to be able to like go get a, a New Zealand visa, but uh-huh. maybe I'm actually trying to do that and get like residency somewhere else that that is favorable. Maybe yeah, I'm trying to go casters who uh, live in like Malta, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe you go live in Malta. Maybe or live in Malta, air quotes. Maybe you go live in <sighs> Delaware or Oregon or something. That like at the very least, I feel like I'm going to go try and live in what is it? Texas has no income tax, right? That's probably different than like prize winning uh, taxes, but Yeah, I can't remember which one which one it is. Uh, I like I grew up in Washington, so I know that Oregon has no sales tax and Washington has no income tax. Mm-hmm. So, Which is nice because they're states right next to each other. So if you're on the border, you just shop in one area and live in the other. <laughs> I, <laughs> yay. I, last episode, I asked like audio people to leave comments about something. This episode, if you're still here and you know anything about American tax law, if you can just let me know what state I need to live in as an esportser so I can do research on that. Thank you and good night. Um, <laughs> as far as I understand, it's not actually going to save you that much money really yeah if you like you you have to like really move you have to like go and and actually go to a tax haven mm. you really want to like dodge some taxes you, you have to you like go, go outside of the u.s live in the caribbean or something yeah yeah You'd probably give up on your citizenship or some shit no you gotta you gotta do some work around you gotta do some create a some shell corporation type shit that's what you gotta do hmm well i mean if you play enough if you win enough. Yeah. You know what the f- fucking... E- even when you... Like, have, did you did you live abroad ever? At any point in time? No. No, I you have You know not. when you live abroad, you still have to file taxes. Yeah. Yeah, as an American. You know? It's, they, they're gonna get theirs, man. They, you, you, in the military, we call it the green weenie. The green the, weenie? The, yeah. What? Green weenie. Well, that's that's Uncle Sam. Uh, he has a Uncle green Sam is going to get his because he's going to fuck gonna, you. He's going to fuck you up. Got green it. weenie is always out to get you. It's always there, man. That's uh, yeah. The American government's going to get theirs, man. Mm, no okay. matter where you're at. Maybe I'll stop publicly talking about tax evasion and try and like just mm. gently steer the conversation back mm. back to Dota Land, but just yeah, back to Dota Land. Did you get excited? Uh, they, they they finally released like the last round of uh, of, of in game items and hats for Dire Tide. Oh yeah, the new chest. It is really good. I don't care that much about cosmetics most of the time. If there is a specific hero and a specific cosmetic, uh, I'm I'm down with it. There's a Snapfire cosmetic that I thought was pretty cool. I want the Primal Beast one, which I haven't gotten yet. Uh, but I'm I'm just not that person who's gonna be really excited about it i want gameplay man i want i want you know i want agonim's labyrinth honestly i want something that i enjoy dire tide was good they did a good job with dire tide i will give them that i I cracked i cracked Uh a little bit and i um i spent twenty dollars to get the razor arcana Mm. so so i but now you're so close i mean you're you're with you're just a few bucks shy of getting the faceless void arcana now. I'm like one night of too many ciders away from being like thirty dollars. <laughs> Fuck it. That's that's like six Starbucks. I love tentacles. <laughs> I I love tentacles. <laughs> Don't clip that. <laughs> yeah, do clip that. That's great. Um, I was excited about the art, the alt style for the for the Razor Arcana, and then I realized how hard it is to unlock. And I'm like, well, I'm never gonna do that. Mm, well, how how hard? What do you have to do? It's like you have to get static link kills. Well, you have to like steal so much damage and kill them under effects of something and it's like 200 kills it's like, it's like mm. but like max 10 per game it's hard it's not it's not worth it yeah they always make it so like it's the hero spammers that actually get the the unlock or there's people who do some like you know 
some some, some uh, yeah do some shit they set up some 10 man matchmaking shit and farm something like that yeah. yeah they always make it pretty difficult which i kind of appreciate just because it it makes it more special when you actually do get it because dota cosmetics in generally speaking are just not that special they really aren't they're There's not very few dota cosmetics that are special which is why most Do- dota cosmetics are uh, on the resale are pretty cheap uh compared to like csgo right yes but csgo is all about their, their whole economy is propped up by the idea of the um like the coefficient for the the degradation the degradation of the skin because you can have something that is like you know factory yeah. new and perfect and it's worth like 10 times the price of the other stuff you know yeah, i was actually looking at the market for stickers to see like if anybody's <laughs> oh, players yeah? if anybody's like player stickers or caster stickers uh-huh. or anybody was like going up and down based on the event being over or voice lines or performance. And I was just looking at graphs and what I concluded was Mm -hmm. not a lot of people are buying stickers. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, that was our prediction from the get go, right? It did not seem like a product that was actually going to take off. Uh, Valve will probably iterate on it for next year. I, I think they have to. A little bit better. It'll be interesting to see if we get an iteration or just a, a scrapping and uh, yeah, maybe, maybe just stop doing it. Maybe a something new. I am looking forward to actually poking around and finding out what some of the numbers are, and maybe I can share them if I do. Just just to like see to see what some of that income was looking like, because just by judging on the the resale sector, there there's mm-hmm. not there's not a ton. Yeah. There's not a ton going I, on. I think I actually got a deposit from the the Valve shop. I think I got like part of my payment for stickers. I I no, I, I don't bother enough to to look it up. I don't know if what I got was from like the maybe it was both. Maybe it was my individual one as well as my uh, as well as my share of the group talent package thing, whatever that was. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, last I looked, I feel like i made about the same as last year and about the same as the year before that so just keep on not that buddy not that much the rich get nice little bonus richer well the rich get richer with the, 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 the real richer effie and slacks yeah yeah they make a they make a lot out of those voice lines you know what? I was actually talking to Cinderin about that because I bought Cinderin, so I was like, I thought your voice line was pretty good. And he was like, Yeah. Apparently nobody else did. <laughs> and I was like, Don't you hate that? Don't you hate that when you make a voice line, you think it's good, and then just like nobody else thinks it. Cause so Cinderin has a like, his line is Dota is so hard, man. And I thought that was really good because it's multi-purpose, right? It's mm-hmm. like simultaneously like you're losing, Dota's so hard, or if somebody's whining, you know, like he says it in a voice that could like it works in multiple, multiple ways. You could use it to taunt people when you're stomping them. Dota is so hard, man. I don't know. I I was like it's a pretty good line. It's multi-purpose. Works for a lot of ways, and yeah, apparently his did not sell very well. So I thought I liked my line, but I want I want like really the uh, I I would just kill for the data of like who sold what, when, and how, and what was actually successful. Yeah, because it's always like you're just trying to game the system. I'm I'm interested in what they're going to do with noises teams next year. Too. Yes, noises are are were the meta, you know. You you know, like you just make the most obnoxious uh, noises. Those are the ones that sell the most. You know? I mean, so, if you think about it, Slacks he has two different noises. You know, uh, he's making his alarm noise, and uh, and well, I guess he's saying God Gamer Alert. You know, he's he's got meme potential. It's obnoxious. It's it's making noises. Yeah, he's you know. Ne- next time I'm just gonna I don't know. I was thinking about. It. I was like maybe I just make music. I thought about maybe that's the next step. Maybe I just take a, a fucking guitar and make the most obnoxious sounds I possibly can. I thought about getting uh, Jake. A, I thought about getting Slacks a Christmas gift, which is a uh-huh. custom alarm clock that is like pre-programmed to just have his voice <laughs> siren. <laughs> you can just hear it all the time. Get like get like a bedside clock because people still use those, right? And I and I just want him to be able to like wake up and be like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah every yeah. day uh 
So I found a little bit of information about the upcoming uh, DPC uh, coverage. Coverage. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna not gonna leak too much, but uh, I I do. Uh, I so I did find out basically that I think that uh, there is one tournament organizer covering three different regions this time. That's like half. Yeah. That. Yes. <laughs> I'm that is good half. at math. And, 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 and especially since like there are some regions that oh well there there is one specific region that is way more valuable than all the rest and there is definitely some regions that are way less valuable than the rest. Uh, I I found that out. And I was just like holy crap. I'm not sure. If, I, I wasn't like uh, I thought ESL is like two region thing. I was like eh, it's a little much, but. Like I like the idea of diversity and multiple tournament organizers competing with products. Uh, like I thought that was, but then I found out three for one tournament organizer. I was just like, oh dear. So uh, yeah. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to be doing this next year because I don't I don't know if I'm going to be hired for the DPC this year. That gives you less. Yeah, that potentially gives people working less options too, right? So... Yeah. I also know there is going to be some third party stuff. Uh, I know that was like a conversation that we had, like, okay, with the separation of upper division and lower division, there's a possibility of third party organizers coming in and running stuff during the lower division. And I'm pretty happy to say that it does look like that is going to be a thing. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that because I felt like the DPC crowded out too much of the schedule and there was really wasn't space for third party stuff. And third party stuff is important. I want third party tournament organizers to be invested in Dota because like if Valve pulls the plug at any point in time, like where the fuck are we then? You know, like they'll come, but I want them to already be invested in the space and to continue to grow that investment. You know, how many third party lands like ESL ones do you think you would need in order it like in conjunction with ti and in conjunction with like majors you're probably getting hired for to really like round out a year and feel good about it without like working all the dpc seasons like uh, were you talking like like would you want like an extra like three events four events ten events is it like a more the merrier situation like without working the dpc yeah so like if you if you were not doing constant dpc work would you be hoping just uh -huh. like you know do you think there would be enough okay, so events let me, to sustain you? Okay, so last year, a DPC season was roughly equivalent to three events, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, three, like, premier LAN events. Um, so DPC season was, was pretty valuable. Um, but, like, also rates have changed from the the time where there was like remember the the minor major the valve minors yeah. and majors where there was events running constantly rates have changed uh, a bit since then but like how many events do i need for me to be like pretty happy and comfortable financially with the year uh i probably need about 10 events and ti which that's, like that's one a month yeah, I would basically need about like one a month. If I'm not doing DPC and I'm doing TI, I would need 10 events outside of that, uh, which is unlikely. I don't think we're getting 10 events this year, 10 third party events. Uh, but there's, there's probably there's not time should for be 10. Having, <laughs> yeah, but there's three majors. Hopefully I get hired for at least one or two of them. I'm probably expect I'm expecting not to get hired for like a major again. Um, because it seems like tournament organizers are now doing a higher two play-by-play -play duos thing now, which I'm not a super big fan of. It seems like a little bit sparse there on the talent. Um, also, TI was a little bit different this year because they only had us work the main event. Um, so that was a little bit of a, a pay cut. Uh, not a massive one, especially considering how much I, I don't want to uh, make. I don't want this to be me complaining. Because while it was a bit of a pay cut, we did way less work. Way less work. Uh, and to be honest, I think the, like, so I was pretty happy with the, what I got paid. From what I understand, the people who got screwed, well, obviously the people who went to Norway probably weren't happy, but the people who I think kind of got screwed or the, the people who work like 
wild card and, and group stage and stuff. I feel like the rates there weren't great from what I hear. Yeah. But then again, they got an opportunity to cast TI, which they probably would not have gotten otherwise. So, Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in if there's going to be like a constriction of talent just because of the way that the... there. I, I could assume that you are going to get potentially different people to cover the, the Division 2 scene. I would assume so as well. Um, I've heard some mixed results about that. Um, I highly doubt anybody's going to be doing any LAN uh, or any in-studio coverage of Div 2. Uh, but it's a possibility. I mean, ESL Why did would for you? Western Europe, but that was there was only Western Europe Div 2 that they did that, right? They were also covering NA and they didn't they didn't do anything with NA Div 2. Uh, Western Europe is like the really only only the it's the it's the big region. It's the money making region. So it's the only region that it's worthwhile, I would say, covering Div 2 in studio. Um, so I highly doubt it. But maybe they still use the same people, but they're using them remote. So they have them come in in studio and then they go home and then they do it remotely from from there or more likely they just get different talent for it. I'm looking forward to it. I just want to I just want I have questions. I want them answered i got questions i want them answered yeah. that's that's the whole me thing. too <laughs> i also want them answered because nobody's contacted me yet i'm curious <laughs> you have to make rent so i guess that there is a little bit of a disparity there <laughs> between yeah. what we're yeah, looking for i'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I, I thought like i was like ah oh, last year was an anomaly but now i'm, I'm beginning to wonder so I, i'm definitely i'm going through the thought process of like what am i gonna do if i'm not working anything until like march or april you know like what what does my life look like then do i just like full-time stream and like try and do that as much as possible to get a little supplemental income do i i've been thinking about going and and going back and taking some college classes just kind of like anything some business classes or or uh maybe communication or something like that uh take some classes like that basically i need something to be doing during this period of time or if it's bad enough like then I kind of got to get like a different job. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's really been on my mind. Wow. What, uh, what a, what a fun, <laughs> what a yeah, fun just like, week in oh, your mental prison. Yeah. I might just be having to like shuffle on to a different career potentially like, Oh, that's not great. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of that, what I've been going through. Does that crop up almost every year around this time or, or, or is that no. a feeling that is getting more intense? No, it's getting more intense over time for sure it's just like uh like it, it like it's kind of like one of those sort of things where you can like afford a bad year but like how many bad years in a row you know if you're the tax so, person yeah. i've been having bad years in a row for like four or five yeah, years like you so know like oh years. man so like, every year honestly, every year's a bad down year. on our luck all the time man <laughs> <laughs> so Can't stop talking yeah, about I mean, that. especially since like dota is probably if dota is on the decline uh most likely esports wise even if the the player numbers and stuff are going up like it feels like dota is on the decline from an esports side so it's like how much how long do you like i want to keep casting dota forever and i probably will keep casting dota forever but like at the same time maybe i can only do it like part-time when i have free time sort of thing and i've got a different job uh full time you know that's my actual career so yeah cuz right now there are no other dota game there there are no other games that interest me outside of dota so i don't there's no chance of me moving commentating into an, like trying to diversify and be like well if i'm not getting a dota gigs then at least i can work in this other game there's no other games that interest me right now that like i would mm. be I would be doing purely for money's sake. Let's put it that way. I'm not sure if I, I want to be like a, a professional host. That's probably that's probably the easy one. Yeah, yeah. That's but there's a fair number of those as well. So I actually don't know how well. Dota is relatively isolated. So I actually don't know how many people in like the broader esports scene even know who I am. That's I yeah you're probably correct about that. Yeah. Probably more, I I would wager more than you think, but you probably think that number is so low that I'm correct because more than <laughs> <laughs> zero is yeah. one. Um, That's true. Anywho, 
that Windows alert is going to be baked to the podcast. Sorry about that. <laughs> was my computer, not yours, fair listener, because you're in your car probably and not listening to Windows. So oopsie doopsie. If you want my Dropbox password, that just popped up. Before we... <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, fuck, how am I going to edit around you're that? You're just a mess, aren't you? I do. I, I don't even want to go to bed yet because on Wednesday, I'm going to go watch uh, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 in theaters because they're doing like a limited release. Mm, okay. And so I want to watch all the movies before then. So I'm going to edit the podcast did you tell me you needed to go to bed early shower and then fall asleep probably immediately watching the movie but before Mm. any of that happens we gotta i gotta hit the stop recording button before that happens i have to hit the stop recording button and then before i hit the stop recording button i need you to read a patreon question because it has been a couple weeks since we've done one and that's mostly that's mostly my fault actually you know can i can i ask you to um read one of the long ones because our pinned discord message is out of character limit so I have to uh, I have to get rid of a maximum a amount of it. characters so I can add more questions in there. Okay. There's definitely some other ones too we can remove from here as well because I think we we covered them. Um okay. Mr. Cakes asked the question, are you aware of any chairs for people who sit weird? Have we done this question before? I don't think so. I have opinions on chairs. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me finish this up. There's plenty of suggestions for people who sit normally, but for weirdos who can't sit normal, it's a bit tougher to figure out. My legs are never under my desk uh, together. Most of the nice chairs are all about posture uh, and such, but that doesn't really work if your natural sitting positions aren't, be- aren't below the desk. Sometimes it's leaned back 45 degrees with one leg on the ground or like as i currently write this uh cross-legged on the seat of the chair i think i'm too big to do something like that effectively any combination that doesn't involve two legs below the desk i assume you probably know of someone who is also a habitual insane sitter (laughs) who also has dealt with this problem uh i mean i do know an insane sitter uh and most people if, 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 if you've ever paid attention to blitz dota you would know that uh that man he's is not a sitter one that, of the most he's not sitting sitters uh, yeah he is constantly in a state of like weird lounging he does a thing where he he okay if you were to lean back in your chair and keep keep leaning and leaning and leaning until your back is no longer against the back of the chair, but it's instead where your butt is. That is a very common Blitz Dota uh, sitting position where he's just kind of laying on the <laughs> that part of the chair and then his lower half is kind of like weirdly supporting him. Uh, he likes to to uh, he he lays on his belly. He'll he'll have the chair recline. And then he'll lay on his belly uh, with the chair completely backwards. So like the, the head of the chair is is then face the other direction. And he's kind of like pushing into it like a seal, basically. Yeah, he, he's definitely the most insane sitter I've ever seen in my life. And I have no idea what he does for a chair because I, I will like if you're an insane sitter, what's the point of getting a nice chair? Yeah, he <laughs> abuses all of them. He doesn't need a nice chair. Yeah. What's your opinions on chairs? I think Herman Miller's are bullshit. And I also think... I have one. I like mine. Mm, okay. You're wrong. <laughs> That's fine. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, just... It's, it's fine. You're allowed to have... I mean, it was way too expensive for, like, I imagine it's too expensive for what I'm getting out of it. But all I know is I sit way too much. Uh, so I'm going to spend a lot of money on the chair. To, to you know give my body the best possible thing it can because i spend way too much time in it i think you should invest in things that help you fight gravity you should have mm-hmm. you should have shoes that are comfortable you should have a bed that you like a pill that you like good tires on your car you should have a nice chair if you can afford one there's a lot of ways to get around that if like you can get some second hand ones they're probably fine the good ones last for a while the thing that throws me for a loop here is the weird sitting thing because I have a couple different sitting positions, but I have been training myself more and more as I get older and my body gets more broken and broken to just sit normally. 
quote normally Mm. whatever you want to call normal i love my steel case gesture i truly think it is the best computer chair that is made because you can adjust like every element of it and it will help you with no matter which way you want to sit in which my priority sitting position is my left ankle tucked under my right knee with my right foot on the ground if i'm not sitting properly and there's enough oh, mine's the opposite i i tuck my right ankle underneath my left leg that's that's interesting yeah yeah in uh, part because i i fucked up my knee at DreamHack, <laughs> I still kind of have like a little bit of Rob bending it all the way. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I th- I think that if you are a person looking for a normal chair, I'm going to try and sell you a steel case every time because I think gamer chairs secret lamb i hope you're not listening to this because i love you and i appreciate all the work you do for for team liquid gamer chairs by and large not super comfortable not going to last you a long time i would be hard pressed to give a recommendation for someone to get one that being just get an office chair said that being said if you are an absurd sitter who wants to sit at weird angles and like have your feet on the seat, the larger version of your preferred gaming chair, like the big Maxnomic or the big Secret Lab Titan Evo, Team Liquid Edition, um, not an ad, you you act there actually is like enough seat for you to like put your feet up there or lean back really hard and it's like balanced pretty well and it's heavy enough and like it's kind of sturdy and it'll probably be fine so i i used to sit all kinds of fucked up when i had a a large one of the large secret lab chairs so i don't know what your current situation is cakes with 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 chairs uh i don't i i don't, I don't know what you're currently sitting in. that probably would have helped for context uh, not to chastise you for your question thank you for being a patron but like <laughs> we can we can continue this on discord i, I think that you are going to be looking for something that has a wide butt basin which i think is the official term for the seat of the chair it's a butt basin sure sure yeah that makes sense I've been missing out on the scientific term for a while now. All right. You did have way more to say about chairs than I expected. Very passionate. You're very passionate about these. I was like, I always, some of these questions are just like, all right, I'm not sure if we're really going to have an opinion on that. You always have a strong opinion about it. Yeah. It's all an act. I don't care about chairs. You should get a standing desk. I hate chairs. Fuck chairs. Yeah. I got a standing desk. Ellie got it for me for my birthday. Uh, a while back she also got me a a custom uh made keyboard uh for this year's birthday mm-hmm. and uh let me just say this thing is is the greatest thing to type on every single time i start typing on i'm just like oh this is nice it's like this nice combination of punchy and buttery it's what, great what kind of switches are in there i don't know <laughs> <laughs> the the good kind yeah it's the it's the right kind uh yeah no I'm, I'm typing on it right now it just it just feels good it's mm. a little it's a, you know it's nice a little bit of clack but it's also kind of buttery smooth yeah it's nice well professional keyboard salesman you just gotta get mm-hmm. the ones that are the right switches and buttery smooth, and you too could have a good birthday keyboard experience. Uh, upgrade your keyboard, upgrade your chairs, upgrade your podcast. I don't know. I, I, I actually I don't have a segue out. Try. I don't. I tried. I tried. Did you hear? You, you, you want? You want? You want? You want to take a swing? You want to take a swing? It, 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 tell the people. Tell the people. Uh, bye. The podcast is ending now. You're right. That was better.